today I am doing my March monthly reading wrap up as well as my April to be read and yeah craziness ensued with my reading this month. Basically I discovered a fabulous binge watch which is called Murdoch Mysteries. I flipping love it and it's one of those shows that feels like a book and thus I got about mid-month and I realized, wait, I'm not reading, I'm watching a TV show. In my defense, Murdoch Mysteries is based on books. Yeah, still wasn't reading a ton of books in actual print. So all the books that I was reading in print, I did start. I am really enjoying them, but I'm only in the middle of them. But I'm not going to force myself to read faster because, you know, I want to enjoy the reading experience. I don't want to go into Slumpyville. So basically what happened, because comic books are faster reads, I ended up finishing pretty much all graphic novels and comics for the month of March. So welcome to yet another comic bookish monthly wrap up. <laughs> Moving on. The first group of comics that I completed were Spider Gwen. You can also get this in a collected volume, which is called Spider Gwen Volume Zero Most Wanted. I just read them individually because that's the way I bought them on Comixology. Spider Gwen is a comic that is based in an alternate universe in which Gwen Stacy was bitten by the radioactive spider instead of Peter Parker and thus becomes Spider Woman and fights crime just like any spider person would. This is a spin-off comic of the Edge of Spider-Verse comic and the Spider-Verse kind of crossover group of comics. Now I did read Edge of Spider-Verse. I didn't read any of the middle section there, but Spider Gwen takes ab place after the big crossover. So I am kind of curious to go back and read the crossover and see what happened there, but you don't have to read that part uh, to understand what's happening in Spider Gwen. I do suggest, however, maybe picking up Edge of Spider-Verse, I think it's issue two that is about Spider Gwen, just to kind of enter the world and get some of the backstory before you read the one through five of just Spider Gwen. Now, I personally loved this group of comics. I just really love Gwen Stacy as a character in these. I really like her backstory that they kind of added to it, I like her conflicts that she has going on in her life. I like the overall humor of the whole piece. And I really think it has like some strong dialogue and it's got really excellent art as well. So I personally gave this five stars. I love it so much and I hope that people want to check out Spider Gwen because I think it's worth a good read. The next book that I completed was a little book called Will You Still Love Me If I Wet the Bed? Yes, even the title is kind of hilarious. This is a graphic novel that was written and illustrated by Liz Prince. It's basically a collection of little tiny comic strips that are about couple them. Little cute things that happen between a couple and sort of the highlights of being part of couples. Now, I did find this enjoyable. It's a really fast read. I think I read it in about an hour or so. And it was really cute. It, I did think it was super cute. However, I overall just kind of thought it was okay. First of all, because it is just comic strips with no real connection of story. So I'm just more of a story arc kind of person. Also, the art isn't like amazing in it. And that's because it's kind of supposed to be diary-ish-y. So it is kind of doodly, and that actually makes sense for the theme. I just wanted a little bit more. So I ended up giving this three stars just because even though I found it entertaining, I wasn't amazed by it. Next comic that I completed was Mystique, The Ultimate Collection. So this collects, I believe, three volumes of the Mystique comic. I believe there are 13 issues in the overall standalone Mystique comic and it collects all of those. This is basically the story of the X-Men anti-hero Mystique and she is called upon by Xavier to run sort of undercover ops on 
things that the X-Men can't deal with. And so she's assigned to go to like other countries and destroy or nip in the bud things that are going to destroy mutant kind as well as sometimes the rest of humanity. Now, sometimes I wasn't always completely committed to the viewpoints in this comic and it is kind of far-fetched in terms of having Xavier kind of send Mystique on missions. Still ended up really enjoying this just because I liked seeing what Mystique's character was like because I don't think in any of the X-Men comics that I've picked up that I really read one that featured Mystique and so thus I got to see that she's like kind of a cool anti-hero. She does have this really fun sarcasm and sense of humor and she also does have you know different character conflicts and things like that and I liked seeing all the angles of her character and you really get to do that because this comic is about her. People don't like the art in this but I thought it was really excellent so I guess it's just depends on what your cup of tea is. I definitely gave this four star so I would definitely suggest checking out Mystique the Ultimate Collection. And the last comic that I completed was volume one of Runaways. This comic is about a group of teenagers who discover that their parents are all super villains and they are surprisingly not fans of this. So they kind of run away from home and are trying to figure out how to get their parents convicted for all their evil deeds and insanity ensues. I love this. I love the premise of it. I loved all the characters and how they had all these specific personalities and how the personalities work together. I also like seeing how all the characters had a skill that was revealed that they didn't know they had before and some of them are big things like superpowers and some of them are just small things about their personality that they didn't know until they were put in this situation. I thought this was a really fun read and I definitely want to read more of these so I gave it five stars. On to my to be read for the month of April. Now as I said I'm kind of in a weird stand still with my books because I'm in the middle of about four books. It's hard to like consider wanting to read anything else when you're in the middle of everything. So my to be read is kind of iffy uh, this time around just because I do want to finish you know uh, some of those other books that I've started as well as the fact that there are books that I do want to read but I don't own them so I'd have to buy them and the thing is I feel like I really want to complete more of my physical books that I have on my shelf that have been on my shelf forever that I have left unread. So I am definitely going to try to at least get one of the actual physical copy books read in my collection. I haven't decided quite what that book is but here are my choices that are in the front of my mind. First of all is Frank Peretti's Monster. I feel that I might be in the mood for something kind of monsterly. Another option is that I might pick up Tamar by Mal Pete. This sounds like a cool mixture of contemporary fiction as well as historical fiction. And you know, why have one genre when you can mix them together, I say. So I may pick that up. Or I might pick up The Immortal by Angela Ewell Hunt. If I'm in the mood for something sort of supernaturally and different, one of those three will probably be started after I finish one of the four books that I'm currently reading. I hope you all enjoyed hanging out with the Hulk and Spider-Man, Captain America and Iron Man with me today for my comic bookish wrap up and I will see you next week. Thank you for watching. Bye!